Hi, welcome to Life of Google's video about how to prepare for a technical interview. I'm Sean, technology and engineering recruiter. I'm Allison, I'm a software engineer. I'm Jess, I'm also a software engineer. Although this video is going to focus on the technical interview, definitely check out our partner video on how to prepare for the business interview as well. It absolutely applies here, but without further ado, let's get into some tips. First things first, make sure you're ready to prove what's on your resume. We're going to want some critical pieces from you, including the bread and butter of software engineering, data structures, well, you could argue with me on that, uh, data structures and algorithms. So we want things like hash tables, stacks, arrays, as well as algorithms, space and time complexity. We also want things like be prepared to code on a whiteboard. This is very different from coding on a computer, so it's highly recommended to go out, find a whiteboard or a chalkboard and try coding something up. It's a little different. And finally, we want to make sure that you're brushed up on system design as well as object-oriented programming. In general, you want to show your problem-solving skills to the question you are asked. If it's a coding question, providing efficient code in a short time frame is key. If it's a design question, work with your interviewer to create a high-level system, um, and if applicable, delving into deeper issues. Um, if it's a general analysis question, show that you understand all aspects of the problem, and if necessary, uh, offer multiple solutions discussing their relative merits. In the end, the interview wants to know if they'd be comfortable working with you on their team. Specifically, you should focus your preparation in the following areas. Coding. Uh, so you're gonna spend the majority of your time actually writing code in the interviews. Um, we do ask that you are pretty familiar with at least one coding language. Um, typically, we'll interview you in C++ or Java. Um, you may use Python or C in different projects here. Uh, you will be expected to know um, APIs, object-oriented design and programming, uh, how to test your code, and be able to come up with corner cases and edge cases for yours and other people's code. Another big thing is algorithms. I mentioned this in the beginning and it's coming up again because surprise, it's important. All right, so you also want to know how complex your algorithm is. Remember, it's time and space complexity as well as how to improve or change it. If you give me an O of N algorithm and then you give me an O of N factorial or O of N squared and you tell me it's better, this is gonna be a little awkward. So another thing, if you get a chance to study up on other algorithms like Dijkstra's or A-star, it'll probably help you too. Testing is incredibly important. Candidates with three or more years of industry experience should have hands-on testing experience. If you have less than three years within the industry, we're just gonna test you for your testing aptitude. You can expect questions such as, how would you unit test the code you write? What interesting inputs uh, or test cases can you think of? And we may also ask you to design end-to-end -end integration, load and performance, or even security tests for a real-world system such as Gmail, for example. Data structures. <laughs> so you should study up on as many data structures and algorithms as humanly possible. You should know some of the most famous classes of NP-complete problems, like the traveling salesman and the knapsack. You should definitely be able to recognize some of these very famous questions when asked in a slightly different way. Also, try and find out what NP-complete actually even means. You should absolutely know trees, some basic tree construction, traversal and manipulation algorithms, hash tables, stacks, arrays, linked lists, and so on. Also, math. Some of our interviewers will ask basic discrete math problems. Don't worry, they will be very relevant. Counting problems, probability, things that happen in everyday life. So before you come in, spend some time refreshing your memory on these things or learning the essentials of probability theory and combinatorics. You should be pretty familiar with N choose K problems and the like. Recursion. Many coding problems involve thinking recursively and maybe coding a recursive solution. Prepare for recursion, which can sometimes be tricky if not approached properly. Practice some problems, which can be solved iteratively, but a more elegant solution is recursion. Operating systems. You should understand processes, threads, as well as concurrency issues and everything related to that, such as semaphores, mutexes, locks, things like that. You should also understand resource allocation, so what resources a process or thread might need. Another thing, context switching. Just brush up a little bit on that, understand that it's initiated in the, in the operating system and underlying hardware. And then one last thing, maybe you might want to know a little bit about how scheduling works. 
system design. Candidates who have been in the industry for more than five years should have experience with system design. These questions are used to see your ability to combine knowledge, theory, and judgment towards solving a real-world problem. Sample topics include feature sets, interfaces, class hierarchies, distributed systems, and designing a system under certain constraints. You should also have an understanding of how the internet actually works and be familiar with the various pieces – routers, domain name servers, load balancers, and firewalls. Also understand the basics of how search works. Now that we've talked a little bit about some of the knowledge areas that we expect you to know, we want to offer you three final tips to really be successful in your interviews. First, explain and clarify. It's extremely important to talk through your thought process during the interview. It is much better to say what you're thinking than to stay silent. Even if you're discarding ideas along the way, your interviewer wants to know your thought process, which ideas you're not going to use, and which idea you finally settle on. Clarifying the question is also important. The, most of the questions at Google are intentionally vague because the interviewer wants to know what questions you would ask if you were in a real world solution that had a vague question. Um, an example of a question you could ask for clarifying is, are there any time or space complexity requirements? Secondly, we want you to keep thinking. We know this is really strenuous, interviewing is really long, but the first solution that you come up with might not be the most elegant, so we encourage you to keep thinking through the problems. Think about your current solution and how you could potentially improve it. And finally, practice. Make sure that you practice physically writing your code. You won't have an editor, no color code for comments, no autocorrect. Be sure to test your code. Be sure that it's easily readable without bugs. Find problems, write code, solve them. There's no better way of practicing than actually writing out code and algorithms. And that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. yeah.